This is Carl at National RV Detroit and I'm going to walk you through this 2018 StarCraft launch model 24 ODK. All right. I'm on the door side of the trailer walking towards the rear. All righty. So, let's see what we got here. We got regular scissor type stabilizer jacks to use a crank or a three-quarter inch socket on a drill. You have a outside refrigerator obviously and some water in a sink. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Let me look around a bit. Okay. Okay, so moving towards the floor, moving forward towards the front. You have your water heater here. Now this water heater, the controls to operate it are inside the trailer. I just need to show you that this is where you drain the water out from right here. And this is a pressure release valve. Never vent, the, vent it or pull the plug when you have hot water in it, obviously. You don't want to scald yourself or worse. This is the vent for your range hood right here. If you're going to run the fan in the range hood, you always want to push up on the corner of this baffle here and free it up so it flaps freely while you're venting. If you're not venting, then uh, just keep it shut, okay? Uh, you got a power awning with an LED strip. Outside speakers, of course. This hook up here is just in case you want to add a, a solar panel to charge your battery. If you ever purchased one it would plug in right there okay this is your hitch of course uh, we'll show you how that operates when you pick up your trailer this is the crank I told you about for the stabilizers right there um, you have two LP tanks which are full a deep cycle marine battery okay walking on the door off door side past the slide out now you have an outside shower, you have your power cord, your short cord, which is 30 feet long and 30 amp cord. This is just cable uh, and uh, satellite through the coax. The most common way to get water in your trailer is the city water connection right here. So you're just going to hook up uh, your city water and you're all set. Uh, now if you happen to go to a campground, that does not have plumbing on the campsites. You can pre-fill your fresh water tank here and uh, take the water to the campsite with you and then pump it using the onboard pump. Okay. Um, these are your dump valves here. You can see you've got a gray valve over here which is for the gray tank which is sink and shower water. And then you've got a black valve here which is for the black tank, which is toilet water and waste. So when you dump it, you put your hose on here, obviously the other end goes into the dump station. Then you're going to dump the black first. After the, that's done dumping, you dump the gray, just because it's cleaner water than the black and it'll help wash it out a bit. But if you leave the black valve open, you can come over here to the black tank flush, hook your hose onto here, turn it on, and it'll spray the inside of the black tank out and clean it out and clean off the sensors really well. Read the sticker here says always make sure the black tank flush valve is open before you turn the water on, so make sure you do that. Alright. So uh, you, you have to inspect the roof of this trailer like every other trailer. So you figure three times a season, spring, middle of the summer, and the fall, you'll go up on the roof or have somebody go up there, walk around, check all the sealant. Make sure there's no cracking or separation starting. Uh, sometime, some year when you go up there, you'll see it. And you have to get it taken care of immediately once you see it. But that's why you're inspecting it, just to make sure. So when it does, it does start to separate somewhere, you'll be able to take care of it. That's not just this trailer. It's all trailers ever made are like that. Okay, so your awning is right here. Your power awning button is right here. See, it just goes out like so back in. Never leave it out unattended. If you're uh, not going to be at the campsite, make sure you roll it in. This is your uh, slide out right here, in and out. Um, your water heater 
to light it on gas is right here. Always make sure that there's water in the water tank before you light it. All right, that's the water pump we talked about. Your battery, charge, fresh water's empty, black water's empty, gray water's empty. You can see it graduates up in one third increments as they fill. Once you get past the two, past two thirds on your gray and black tank, you have to start thinking about dumping it, of course. All right, your microwave works like any other microwave. This is your range hood. We talked about the baffle on the vent outside. So if you're gonna run the fan like that, make sure you open the baffle. Got a light there. Okay, so this, I don't know if he's got the gas on, but we'll, we'll go through the paces anyway. So yeah, you turn this to light and spark it. It did light, so he does have gas. Or I guess not, he must have shut it off because we're just, yeah, so we just, that was the end of the gas. So the bottom line is you put it on light and then turn the sparker clockwise to light it, okay? With the oven, it's a little different. You need a grill lighter. So if you go to the, look down all the way to the back back there, you can see there's a flat out light. So what you need to do is you get a grill lighter with a long neck, then you'll come to the awning knob here, or I'm sorry, <laughs> not the awning knob, but the oven knob right here. Then you'll push it to, to pile it and hold it depressed like that. Keep it at depression, so take the other hand and light the uh, pilot light back there. Once it lights, you're still holding this in, you hold it for another 10 seconds after it lights. Go to operating temperature. It cycles as an oven does, but when you shut it off, it'll automatically, um, you know, the flame will go out, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Okay, this is your refrigerator. It's, okay, so, um, it's on and off right here, so it's on. You, this either runs on LP gas or 110 AC. So, for mode, you're gonna go to auto, like that. Auto and, and AC light at the same time, because auto means AC. The reason they call it auto is if you, let's say you, you can't find AC, it'll automatically light on gas. Or, let's say you go out adventuring early in the morning and you're running on, on um, AC power, and you have a power failure at the campground, well, it'll automatically switch over to gas for you so it don't spoil the food. So that's why they call it uh, auto. Um, you can also run it dedicated to gas by going like that. Um, but if you don't have electricity, it's always going to end up on gas. Okay. Um, and that is your, just your temperature. You're just going to have it up basically all the way. Okay. All right. So let's see what else we've got here. Here we have our LP gas and, hold on one second here, let me get down. We have our LP gas um, and carbon monoxide detector right here. I'll set it off for you so you can hear it. <coughs> Another cell test coming up. Okay. Back to green. <coughs> Excuse me. So, if it goes off, you obviously you take everybody outside, leave the door open. Shut the gas off of the front and figure out what's going on. It should always be green like it is, otherwise you get it serviced, okay? This device here is the power converter. So what this does, it converts 110 AC to 12 volt DC. So you got regular 110 AC uh, circuit breakers in here just like you would at home, and they're all labeled. Uh, then the power is converted to 12 volt DC over here, and you got 12 volt fuses here, and they're labeled. Um, so if any of the 12 volt fuses were to blow, they'll actually light up. You can actually see them glowing through this perforation here. Also, another important thing about this, if you're plugged into shore power, it'll always keep your battery charged, so it charges your battery also. So uh, keep in mind that uh, it'll charge your battery. Also, of course, when you're towing, your alternator on your tow vehicle will charge your battery. When you're plugged in, this power converter will charge your battery, so your battery should always stay charged up. Okay. All right, so let's go into the bathroom. Sink and the shower work like any other sink and shower. Uh, this is a GFCI here, plug. All the plugs in the trailer are wired through a GFCI, so if you, you know, using a coffee pot outside and you pop it, the, the, the uh, GFCI, you're always gonna reset it here. Also, also always use the vent, the power vent, to, uh, when you're using the shower so you can pull the humidity out. And the toilet, the main thing to know about the toilet is you can't use it dry or without chemical. When I say dry, 
the black tank is directly below. So the first thing you're going to do is when you come in here is you're going to, you're going to, um, when you get to the campground, you'll plug in your trailer, hook up the water, that sort of thing. You'll come in here, you'll dump your chemical right in the toilet bowl, right? Um, then you're going to stand on the pedal like so and put about a gallon of water or so in the tank along with the chemical. There's no way to tell exactly what a gallon is. You're just going to use common sense. You've got to have some water in the black tank and some chemical when you start using it. So it doesn't have to be exact. It can be more of it. It can be a little less. Um, but the bottom line is you have to have water and chemical in there when you start using it. Okay? All right, so let's see what else here. Of course, this trailer has to be winterized, and you have to bypass the water heater um, before you pump antifreeze into the system, so make sure you educate yourself about that. Uh, this is your thermostat. It's very simple. You just push the mode button to light it up, and then you go from cool, furnace off, fan, and back to uh, air conditioner. Um, try to keep everything on auto all the time if you can. The, when it says fan, the fan is just the air conditioner running without the compressor, so it just circulates air, all right? Okay. Also, there's a lag time every time you choose it. Like if you turn on the AC, there could be up to six second lag time, so keep that in mind. That's perfectly normal. Uh, all right, so you want to, if you pull the legs off of the table, you can drop the top down on those cleats and turn this into a bat, of course. This is your uh, entertainment area. You've got your radio. Uh, and your, uh, your TV would go right here. Keep in mind that this is the signal booster for the digital antenna, so you always want it to be on like that. That's important. Um, you can, it's an AM FM radio, obviously. You can stream off this USB. You can stream with Bluetooth, so there's a lot you can do with it. Okay, and then of course the bedroom. You have another hook up here and a backer plate if you want to put a a TV here over the foot of the bed. Also there's storage below the foot of the bed like a foot locker. This is your um, escape window, your emergency window. So you're just going to go like this if you have to. Push this all the way through and you grab a hold of the red tab, pull the screen out and out you go. So in an emergency you can always get out that way. Okay so let me look around a little bit here. You get your smoke detector here without a battery in it. It would be like a broken record. Let me go find a battery for you. Okay. Um, let me look around. I think that pretty much covers it. So, um, first of all, thanks for buying your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Second of all, remember to inspect your roof every 90 days or three times a season. And always bypass your water heater before winterizing. And always, always winterize before you go below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. So um, keep all that, all that in mind. And, and most of all, make sure you use it a lot to, uh, to get the most adventure out of it you possibly can. Thank you.